Hello everyone. So for our last unit, we're going to be going over bandaging and taping. Um, I actually do have some supplies here to show you some of the tapes that um, we have in this PowerPoint, but again, not all of them. So if you want to look any of them up on YouTube, go right ahead. But along with this link that I'm going to be sending you, I'm going to be sending you other links of me performing the different tape jobs as well. So to start off, there are different purposes. So there's to provide compression and minimalize swelling. So that's going to be like your ACE bandaging. Um, providing additional support when applied correctly can also be your ACE bandaging, but that's going to be more so your taping. And then it also reduces the chance of injury, and that's going to be your taping. Then we have taping versus bracing. So taping is obviously what you see athletic trainers do on the sidelines when someone like sprains an ankle or their wrist or something, and they have that white tape or that power flex, which is stretchier tape, and they just kind of roll it up real quick, tape them up real quick. Whereas bracing, you have different types of bracing. You have prophylactic, which is to prevent injuries. You have post-op injuries uh, or post-op braces. So after like you get an ACL repair or Tommy John surgery, they're gonna give you a brace for that. Um, you have rehabilitative braces, which an athlete or someone will wear to um, use when they're doing their rehab. Um, and then there's also immobilizations, which is more of like your splinting type things um, that we already talked about at the beginning of this class. So we're going to move on to our elastic bandages. These are our ACE wraps. They are very extensible and very useful with sports. They're active bandages, so they allow for more movement. They also provide support and compression for wound healing, which we used when we were doing SAM splints. They vary in size. So there's two inch, three inch, four inch, six inch, that double length that I was talking about in both four inch and six inch. Um, the length and the width vary and are used according to the body part and size. So again, if you have a smaller person, probably use more of the two inch or three inch single or even four inch. Um, whereas if you have a bigger person, I would use either the four or six inch double. They should be stored rolled, so that container that I brought out when we were going over splinting, how they were rolled up nicely um, and secured with the kind of latches that they have, that's how they should be stored. They should be free from wrinkles and then seams and imperfections when you're using an ACE wrap on someone could cause irritation to that body part. So we want to hold the bandage in our preferred hand loosely and extending it from the bottom of the roll. The back of the loose surface end should lay on the skin surface. So we want to flip it over so we're rolling it on, not kind of forcing it on. So the pressure and tension should be standardized. Anchors are created by overlapping the wrap. So start an anchor at the smallest circumference of the limb and then work your way up. So distal to proximal. So we always want to wrap distal to proximal. We want to wrap tight to loose. Okay, the body part should be wrapped in a position of maximum contraction. And then the more turns with moderate tension versus fewer turns with maximum tension. So again, that is based on the swelling that you have in that area if you're using an ACE bandage for that. So fewer turns, probably less swelling. Um, more turns with tension, probably have more swelling in that one area. But again, if you think that you're pulling tight on an ACE wrap, you could probably pull tighter. And then each turn should overlap by half to prevent any separation. So if we have a separation in that ACE wrap, that swelling is going to sneak through that little hole that we have there and it's not going to be effective. Circulation should be monitored when the limbs are wrapped. So that's when we want to check our pulse, motor, and sensation before and after we ACE wrap anything. Same with splinting. So again, we have an ankle and foot spica. These are the ones that you can look up on YouTube. I don't have an ACE wrap with me to show you, um, but there's an ankle and foot spica, a spiral bandage, groin support, which is your hip flexor spica, a shoulder spica, elbow figure eight, gauze hand and wrist figure eight, and then a cloth ankle wrap. Okay, next we're gonna move on to taping. So historically, this is a super important part of athletic training. There are questions about its effectiveness, the stronger versus the weaker joints, whether they need taped or not. And then this does lose its effectiveness during practice. So a lot of times you'll see people with white tape like this on their ankles, on their wrists, on the, even on their elbows or knees. Um, but when someone sweats during practice, this loosens up really easily and it starts to slip down, whether you tape it onto the skin or not, whether you use that sticky adhesive that we're gonna talk about called tough skin or not, it's still going to lose its effectiveness when you start sweating. 
but this is utilized in areas of injury care and protection. So injury care, we have this as securing wound dressings, using it as pressure wraps, supporting recent injuries, and then provide support during rehab. As used in prevention by used to protect against acute injuries, so that would be kind of your ankle sprains during practice. It does help limit the motion of the joint, and then it also helps secure special devices. So if you have that ACL or that UCL tape um, or a brace on your knee or your elbow and you want just more support there, then we can use this tape to help as well. We have non-elastic adhesive tape. So this is great adaptability due to the uniform adhesives and its hearing qualities, lightness, and relative strength. This helps to hold dressings and provide support and protection to injured areas. So this is that one inch white tape that we're going to see. It can come in one inch. So this thickness could also come in half inch, which is a little smaller. So half of this. Then we have our one and a half, which is a little bit thicker, and then also comes in two inch. I don't have two inch non-elastic adhesive tape, but this is what the two inch would look like in this guy. This is PowerFlex, so this is our elastic tape. So when we're preparing for taping, the skin surface should be completely clean. The hair should be removed, but again, that's the athlete's option. If they don't want to shave, that's totally fine. You want to apply that tape adherent, so that's that tough skin that I was talking about earlier. It's a spray. Um, a lot of you have probably seen it. It's kind of like hairspray, but a little thicker. Some people are allergic to this tape adherent, so you always have to ask them before you spray it on them, are you allergic, are you not? Then we have foam and skin lubricant should be used to minimize blisters. That's these guys right here. It's called a heel and lace pad. So this is kind of like a foam material. And then if we open it up in the center, it's our skin lubricant. It's kind of like Vaseline. Um, and we just put those together and make a heel and lace pad. And I'll show you how we put them on for an angle tape when I send you that video. Pre-wrap, which everyone I think knows what pre-wrap is. This guy right here comes in different colors. Um, but it can be used to protect, to protect the skin and then some tape directly to the skin, some use pre-wrap. Again, it's just up to your discretion. And then that pre-wrap should only be applied in one layer. So our proper taping technique, we want to tape the width used dependent on the area. We want, we want our acute angles, um, so narrower tape if we're doing something like a thumb or a wrist, um, whereas ankles we want to use our thicker tape. When we are tearing the tape, I'm just going to tear the one inch for you guys. We want to hold on to the roll of tape. So you can see I'm holding it here. Do not bend, twist, or wrinkle the tape. So we want to pull it apart a little bit using our pointer fingers and our thumbs and rip like that. So straight edge, no loose strands. Um, some of the tapes may require cutting, um, and that's our Elasticon tape which is this tape. It's a little thicker. This comes in two inch, four inch, and one inch. Um, and it is very, very difficult to rip, so you won't see a lot of people ripping that. So our rules for tape application, position the joint in which it must be stabilized, overlap the tape by half. So I'm just gonna show you this real quick on my finger. So I'm gonna start here. I'm overlapping by half. Just quick show how to overlap by half. You want to keep the tape roll in your hand whenever possible. So don't rip and then set it down and then rip and then set it down. When we are taping, we want to smooth and mold the tape as it is applied. So if I'm taping like this, I'm going to smooth that out, smooth that out there, overlap by half, smooth that out there, and then when I come back across, I want to smooth it out so there's no wrinkles. Allow the tape to follow the contours of the skin. Don't force the tape when you are taping because that's what's going to cause your wrinkles and it's going to be uncomfortable. When you start and finish, you want to start with an anchor strip and close with an anchor strip. And then there's maximum support if desired. That's where we tape directly to the skin. Again, it's up to your discretion and the athlete's um, level of comfort as well. So don't apply tape to the skin if it is super hot or super cold from treatment because it won't really stick. So there's common foot tapings. The one that I'm going to show you is going to be an X arch tape because that's what I learned. 
Um, there are many different techniques. You can use the Lodi technique, um, you can use a weave technique, and all of these you can look up on YouTube again. Then we have our toe tapes, so that's more of like our buddy tape, or tape two fingers or tape two toes together. Um, there's tape for bunions. There's a turf toe tape, a hammer toe tape, and then a fracture toe tape as well. So again, you can look all those up on YouTube. They're fairly simple. Next, we have our common ankle taping techniques. The one that I'm going to show you is a closed basket weave, and that is the most common one that you're going to see. You're not really going to see an open basket weave. That's more so used if you have a high ankle sprain, um, and there's a lot of swelling in that area, you'll use that. But again, you can look all these up on YouTube to see the different types of tape jobs, but I will be showing you the closed basket weave in a separate video. Then we have common low leg taping techniques. So we have an Achilles tendon tape job, an MCL or LCL, a knee hyperextension, so that's for that ACL, a patella femoral or McConnell tape, so that's to help that patella um, to sit in that groove so it doesn't dislocate or sublux on its own. And then we also have a tape for patellar tendonitis. And lastly, we have common upper extremity taping. So again, that elbow hyperextension, there's several different techniques for wrists. A lot of the times you'll just see basic wrist circles. There's one for hand contusion, a sprained thumb, which is gonna be a thumb spica, and that's what I will show you guys in a separate video. And then finger and thumb check reins, um, which is kind of that video you see, or that picture that you see on the slide. If you guys have any questions on this video or the taping videos that I send you, shoot me out an email and I will answer them as best as I can. Look forward to the other links that I send you. Thanks.